Hey, everyone, and welcome to Compassion in Action. Today, we have two people that probably need no introduction. Um, Reverend William Melton and Victoria Moran founded, along with Reverend Sarah, founded the Compassion Consortium. And they are two people that I believe really live into action, the phrase compassion in action. They've done so much for so many years to help animals. And now they're involved in a really exciting project that's spreading that message even more. And it's a film called Miss Liberty. It's feature film. So to discuss that today, here we are with Reverend William and Victoria Moran. Welcome, you guys. Hey, Elaine. Thank you. So, Victoria, I'd like to ask you one question. Um, you were part of a vegan documentary called A Prayer for Compassion. That was such a cool film. And there are a lot of vegan documentaries out there, but Miss Liberty is a feature film and so much more expensive to make than a documentary. What made you take this task on? Oh, well, sometimes I think because we're crazy. I think the direct answer is that I'm married to a guy who wasn't thinking about doing the impossible. He just set out to do it. And it was really William who wrote the first draft and came up with the idea for Miss Liberty, which is a story. And as you say, the documentaries are so terrific and they are just coming at a steady clip. They're doing so much good. We've got the Rowdy Girl documentary out now that's that's doing a lot. Uh, the smell of money uh, about what happens, you know, in the areas where they raise the pigs, what happens to the humans there is a big one. We've got Christspiracy coming this week. It's going to be in 600 theaters across America and is getting a lot of play. So documentaries are wonderful and they're changing a lot of minds and hearts. But most people aren't going to see vegan or animal centric documentaries but people have historically gone and taken their kids to see movies that have an animal in them. And so we got a movie with an animal, but also with a really great story, a fabulous surprise ending, and we're excited. Sounds fabulous. William, you're the creator. Where did this, where did the inspiration come from for this film? Okay, so where was the inspiration? So um <laughs> Well, you know, it's not uncommon for a cow or other animal to escape from a, a truck or a slaughterhouse. And we all cheer the escaped animal. And sometimes the animal is saved to a sanctuary. But after the cheering, most humans just continue doing the same thing, killing and eating other living beings. So... I started with the concept um, and developed by the story, starting with the story of Miss Liberty. Subtitle is A Taste of Freedom. And so this was actually, believe it or not, this was in 2007 when I originally wrote the, the script. And so what is it now? 2024? So is that 17 years? And so... I went to Farm Sanctuary in Watkins Glen, and I spent a month um, working on the story, writing the script, working with Jean Bauer from, from uh, Farm Sanctuary. And most importantly, I got to know cows because I had never actually met a cow. So this was an opportunity. And... Um, Worked on it from 2007 until now, 2024. Believe it or not, 95 drafts. That's just the process of how it works. And now, after all of these drafts and years, largely due to Victoria, because I'll be totally honest with you, I gave up. She is a force of nature, and she would not give up. So here we are in a position to actually move forward with pre-production and initial funding. And maybe there will be a different ending to Miss Liberty's story. 
but you're going to have to wait until the movie is released and you see the ending. I love that Victoria um, helped carry your vision for you when you were tired of looking at it. That's why you guys are such a great team. Victoria, who, who's the target audience for this film? Who, who will be coming to see it? Well, that's one of the most exciting things about this film, because it's people who have never really thought about farmed animals or agriculture or making food choices for ethical reasons. So my target person, when they always tell you as a writer, you're supposed to think about one person who's going to read or watch what you're doing. And I see a single dad out in the Midwest where I'm from. He's got his kids for the weekend. And he thinks, okay, what will we do? I guess we'll go to McDonald's and then we'll go see this movie with a cow in it. And this is the kind of person, those dads, those moms, those people looking online for something to stream. It's a great story. And we are in this wonderful heritage of cinematic stories that have changed the world. So we know that something like um, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner that came out when I was a teenager and I was a kid who watched adults and kind of watched how they thought about things. And one thing I noticed was adults don't like interracial relationships. I mean, when I was a kid in the 50s and 60s, it didn't matter, you know, if people were conservative or liberal or black or white, you know, it's just you just don't do that. And this movie happened. And I know it wasn't overnight, but it just seemed to crumble that particular prejudice. And we've seen that in so many other movies that are first and foremost great stories. And then as a ripple effect, they change the world. And we've seen this with animal movies as well. When Bambi came out in 1945, hunting decreased markedly and has never gone back to its pre-Bambi numbers. And that was a film designed for kids. And our film is one that kids can go to see. They'll like it. There are a couple of kids in the film. They'll relate. But there's so much that's very sophisticated and, and uh, subplots that are really for adults. So I think we're going to be reaching the young generation for the future. And we're going to be reaching a lot of people for right now. Well, I love it. There's a message that's at the core of this film, um, incredibly important, and I identify with what you said about Bambi. Uh, uh, but William, I have a question for you. The story is what is going to grab people. The message is great, but the story is what will grab people. Can you tell us a little bit how you develop the storyline? Um, yeah. It's hard for people who are not. Go ahead. I, I, I can't. I mean, it's a 137 page script. That's so, but I'm going to give you. A very, very short summary. So Miss Liberty is a dairy cow who escaped from a truck while being loaded into a slaughterhouse. And Bob Sanders, the main character, is a computer techie who was cheated on a contract by, um, by the slaughterhouse. And so the cow escapes and runs into her back garden. And besides, uh, Bob decides to hold the cow as collateral until Jack Parnell, who's the owner of the uh, slaughterhouse, agrees to pay Bob. And Bob has two children, two young children, who come to love the cow. So major character is Jack's son, who's a major character, Jack Parnell Jr. But he is universally known in the town as Jackass. And a local lawyer knows a classmate from NYU who was an internationally, internationally known animal rights lawyer, Patricia Levinson, known in the animal rights world as Cow Patty. And I guess all of you know what a Cow Patty is, I'm, I'm guessing. So Cow, De Pat, Cow Patty decides to take on the case and defend Bob and the cow and travels to this small town in the Middle West, Midwest, to fight for the cow. And then Cow Patty's ex-husband, uh, who now works for the association, which is an unidentified cattle livestock trade organization, he shows up in town to defend Mart 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 Arnell's 
slaughterhouse and get the cow back to the slaughterhouse for processing, as they call it. Another major character is the slaughterhouse foreman, Carlos um, Garcia. And he is known as Shakespeare because he has a degree in English literature, but he's reduced to working in the slaughterhouse. So he tries to deal with the harsh, dangerous working conditions in the slaughterhouse and protect his workers. So as the story develops, Cal Patty describes or de decides to name the cow as Miss Liberty in a nod to the Statue of Liberty, whom Cal Patty happens to pass every day on the, <laughs> very, on the ferry as she travels to Manhattan to her law firm. So the press latches onto this name and Miss Liberty becomes a national cause to live. And the story goes from there. You know, I love how you've involved all the facets of the slaughterhouse world, including the human workers as well. And I will tell you, I'm waiting with bated breath to see this film because of, I keep hearing about the surprise ending and I wanna know what that is. So Victoria, what can all of us do to become part of this film? How can we help you succeed? How can we be part of this film's uh, success? Well, it just uh, tell us that you're interested. And since um, uh, William told you the actual given name of the, of the Shakespeare character, I just want to share that Carlos Garcia, who read The Tenants today and who is going to be helping us out as, as we get going to raise the, the rest of the development funds, um, he was given the script by one of the people from Gentle World. That's an organization. We had the founder, Light, as, as one of our special spiritual guests here at the CC about a year ago. And she wanted Carlos to read the script because he had the same name as one of the important characters. And he fell in love with the movie. And we've been in touch for over a year. And now, now this, this isn't to scare you that you're going to have to like pick up and move and come be part of the <laughs> production of the film, but that's kind of how it happened. So Carlos is going to be out here to help us and people who are perfectly happy where they are and don't want to <laughs> come and be physically part of, of making this movie. The first thing you can do is go to the website, which is misslibertythemovie.com. And that is in the, um, the chat. Thanks, Reverend Sarah. And that gives you everything. You can also sign up for information and to be kept uh, in touch, kept abreast of what's happening. If you are particularly interested in film, if this is exciting to you, and you want to get in on being part of it, either mm -hmm. as a, an investor or in some other capacity, you can just write to me, victoria at victoriamoran.com. And uh, we're happy to, uh, to let you know what else is going on. We are planning a big party in New York City for sometime this spring. If you're in this part of the world and want to be invited, let us know. And we also have a little bit of a presence over there on X, which used to be Twitter. And there it is at Miss Liberty Film. So other ways you can uh, keep in touch and learn what's going on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving a taste of this film. And to both of you, thank you for all you've done for animals and all you continue to do. To you as well, Elaine.